Ever feel like you're running ads over and over and over again only to get zero results? But what if we can create an omnipresent strategy just in Google Ads? My name is Sam Palero. I used to run ads for VaynerMedia, one of the biggest agencies in New York City. Then I ran ads at Bark, one of the largest and fastest growing direct consumer e-commerce brands in the entire world. Now I own and operate the Moonlighters. We take brands from seven to eight figures using advanced media strategies. In this video, we are going to be going through the exact strategy we use for brands that are operating under $1 million in revenue and how we set those brands up on Google for maximum success. This setup is meant to be simple because we can't have too many things, we can't spread our money too thin to actually understand what is working and where it's working. This is an example of exactly what we're gonna set up. One performance max campaign and one branded search campaign. Now, there are complexities within these campaigns that we're gonna go through step by step. Let's start with the performance max campaign. For the sake of this video, we are actually gonna start it completely from scratch. First things first, click your sales objective. And then what's really, really important is just select your purchase conversion goal. So in this case, we're just going to remove our add to cart goal here. We really just want to have purchases being tracked. We don't want the data to be confused. Click continue. And then there's gonna be a bunch of campaign types available. We want to select performance max. The beauty of performance max for smaller brands is that it's going to cover all of these other campaign types. So you're going to have placements on shopping, display, discovery, YouTube, and search. Now, when you're a bigger brand and you're operating across all of these verticals on your own, it's really not necessary to do this. In fact, it's a little inefficient. But when you are a small brand, we have to use Performance Max to our advantage to create, like I said before, that omnipresent strategy just using one channel. So the next thing we wanna do is click Performance Max and then really, really important, we need to select your products from your catalog. If you haven't already, you need to watch our Merchant Center tutorial. You just have to have all your products set up in Merchant Center, ready to go. Next part here is the campaign name. We just like to be a little bit descriptive here. So in this case, we are just gonna name it ML, which stands for the Moonlighters and Pmax because it's a performance max campaign. If you were setting up multiple performance max campaigns or you had a specific product that you were offering, it's great to put another descriptor in here just so you don't forget what it is. Then I'm gonna click continue, start new. Now getting into the settings here. When you are first starting your performance max campaign, we always want to focus on conversions, not conversion value. Seems to be the thing that you wanna do right off the jump. But all we're doing is making Google use more of its algorithm to basically try to get you as much money as possible. What we want to do is simplify it. We want to take it a step back. All we want to tell Google is we don't care what the conversions are, just get us conversions. Now, something I didn't mention already that's important to note is that if you have products that range from $2 to $200, you don't really want to advertise those $2 products. Well, let's say you're a clothing brand. You sell everything from socks to jeans to fancy shirts. You don't really need to advertise your socks. Those are only going to cost $5 to $10. You want to advertise the items that you really want customers to buy that will get them coming back over and over. So that's why we use the conversions bidding action. We are not going to set a target cost per action. You're under a million dollars in revenue here. What we don't want to do is overcomplicate the system. Eventually, we can add a target cost per action. But if you're just starting out, use just conversions as is. Next part here is optimize campaigns for acquiring new customers. If you select this, there's basically going to be a bunch of different recommendations on how your bidding works. Truthfully, we don't need to select this. You can select one option down here, which is only bid for new customers, here's the thing. You need to have a thousand existing customers in a list to be able to use this option. For this sake, we are not going to select this and we're going to go to the next step. For campaign settings, we are going to click the target country that you're in. We're going to use the language that your site operates in and we do not want to create automatically created assets. So we are going to unselect this and go down to more settings. In the more settings area, you are going to see ad schedules. This is something that is really, really important as your brand is growing. Everything else here can be left as is. If you are using UTM parameters, if you know what that is, I'd recommend you put them at the campaign level or the account level, but we're not going to go through that in this video. Moving forward, we have our first asset group. How Performance Max works is they kind of renamed a few things. Ad groups or ad sets are now called asset groups. You could just think of as a group of products and a group of images and a group of text. It's pretty simple. For this case, I would normally name our asset group whatever product we're selling. This example here is for a shoe brand, so I'm just going to call it shoes one, but you should probably be a little bit more descriptive. And then what you want to do is click on this. This is your listing group. In your listing group, you're going to be able to define and break down to use a selection of products that you want to use. I am not going to show you our exact selection of products, but what I highly recommend is you use a category or grouping of products. For example, if you sell high heels, running sneakers, and casual shoes, I recommend that you break those all out into separate listing groups. That's going to allow you to actually understand what category actually drives your conversion so you could spend more money against it. Once you select your products, or even if you have a small catalog and you just use all 
all products, you can move on to the assets. For the final URL, right at the top here, we are going to use the actual site URL. Very, very straightforward. Next piece here, we want to upload about 10 images. Now you can go more than that, you can go all the way up to 20, but 10 should be your floor. What we wanna have here are lifestyle images, not product images. Now you can see there's a couple of fun images here that we can basically just immediately upload, or you can go ahead and upload directly from your computer. One more thing to keep in mind on images, you wanna have a mix of square images and landscape images. You need to have the variety here because there's a lot of placements that this is gonna cover. Next is logos. Just upload one logo on a white background or a transparent background. And here's something that feels counterintuitive. For the first time here, Google is adding videos into Pmax. We do not want to upload videos. If you upload videos, all of a sudden you're gonna start showing up everywhere on YouTube. And generally it's gonna be very, very inefficient. Now, if you are a very, very, very high priced product, you should upload videos. But for 99% of you, do not upload videos. I would say if your product is under $1,000, no videos need to go into this section. Next couple of portions here are all around copy. We have our headlines, our long headlines, and our descriptions. Now, basically your headlines can be 30 characters and they are gonna show up in search ads and they're also gonna show up in some discovery ads. I highly recommend you include your brand name at least once. It could be something like brand name, official site, followed by any other key call to actions for your product. So the shoes example that we've been doing, we could say high quality heels, booties, and whatever else. You could just hit a bunch of categories that you're selling. Now, what I would also recommend is you have at least one or two call outs. So this would be shop now or shop woman shoes. Fill these headlines with a bunch of call to action, some product descriptors, and your brand name. Now for the long headlines, I highly recommend you use these effectively. These need to be 90 characters each. What you should be doing here is loading this in with really important brand information. And the same exact thing applies for your descriptions. That is the context of the Performance Max campaign for all the assets that you're putting in here. Now there's one more piece. This is the audience signal. What you're gonna do is select add an audience signal and new audience signal. Within this section here, you wanna actually include data for every single call out here. We wanna go through our custom segments. We wanna add into your data, your interest, and your demographics. First things first in your custom segments. This is where you can add keyword list. You could add different things that your competitors are doing here. Generally, you wanna just create a new segment and add your search terms here. What's really important is that you use both of these options. So you should have at least two lists in your custom segments area. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna add in two that we've used in the past for this brand and then move on to your data. Your data is, as it says, it is literally data that you own. This could be from your CRM, it could be from your email list, this could be from your pixel, from your tag, any cohorts that you've created along the way. In this case, there are just two that are most important. We need to have your purchase all time and your site visitors over the last 180 days. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that every single person in these cohorts is going to be targeted. For Performance Max, we're using this as a guide. Pmax takes this information and says, okay, we need to find people like this. That's why we like to put those big groupings in there. Again, for the sake of this, I'm just gonna grab us site visitors and purchase all time right here. The last part is the interest and detailed demographics. This is very similar to like Facebook interest. You just need to drop in a bunch of things that are similar to your brand. For the sake of this shoes brand, we're just gonna go through, select a bunch of these because these are actually very relevant. So we have shoes right at the top, shoe stores, DSW, high heels, women's work shoes, elevator shoes. I think you get the point. You wanna include a ton of different interest, detailed demographics here because this is going to really, really help propel and get you that reach that you need to make this campaign have that real omnipresent feel. Last part for demographics, we always wanna select everything here unless you are an extremely exclusive brand to one gender or the other. But in most cases, you should be selecting all and then clicking save from here. Final part of setting up your Pmax campaign is of course the budget. This is pretty straightforward, but the number one question we get, how much should we spend? What do you recommend for the budget? Small brands always come to us and they always say, well, what do you think we should spend? What I would like to say is you should spend 25 times whatever your average order value or whatever your product price point is. This is gonna get you a ton of conversions and a lot of data quickly that we can make changes off of. Now, if that's not reasonable, if you have a $100 price point, maybe you're not in a position to spend $2,500 a day. That's no doubt a lot of money. What I would recommend is you have at least $100 to $200 in budget here.
here and you let Google run for at least a week before you start to make changes. That is the performance max setup. And now we're gonna move over to our branded search setup. The next part of this omnipresent strategy that we're creating on Google and the best setup we recommend for brands under $1 million in revenue is the brand core exact campaign. This is a search campaign. In our UI here, we are just gonna click new campaign. We are going to choose the objective sales. And just like last time, let's get rid of add to cart here. You only want your purchase conversion goal to be purchases. Click continue. For your campaign type, this is going to be a true search campaign, but there's gonna be a couple things in here that are a little unusual that most brands and agencies just don't do at all. First, you need to type in your website. In this case, we are just gonna say themoonlighters.com. For the campaign, we just wanna name it brand underscore core underscore exact. This is gonna be a very clear indication that this is our brand campaign for search and that core identifies that these are our main keywords. We're not getting too fancy with these keywords. We're not trying to hit hundreds of products that we offer. We're just saying this is the core of our business. This is what people call us. Click continue. Now here's where we want to tweak some settings. In bidding, instead of focusing on conversions, we actually want to focus on impression share. Naturally, we all guide ourselves to a conversion strategy, but there's one problem with this. Google just wants to get you the cheapest conversion. They don't care how many people see your brand name. What winds up happening is they get you really cheap conversions for people who are already going to convert on your brand anyway. This is the classic problem with branded search. You're like, well, they were searching my brand anyway. Why did I even need to be there? Why did I need to pay that 30 cents or whatever? The reality is that if you're not there, your competitors are going to be there and they're going to take those conversions away from you at the very last second. After you've hit them on Facebook, you've showed them discovery ads, you've shown them YouTube ads, they've interacted on your Instagram. You may have even talked with them. Maybe they added things to site and they're about to purchase with you, but then someone jumps in at the last second and they're one step ahead of you. And that's the difference between the conversion and not getting the conversion. For this case, we need to put impression share as our strategy. And even more important here, absolute top of page results. You want your ads to appear at the number one spot at all times. For percentage of impression share, this needs to be 95% to 99%. It should never, ever, ever be 100%. If it's 100%, you're going to pay way more than 99%. Trust me, does not work. We roll with a 95% impression share, and then we want to set our max CPC bid limit. Google naturally ranks each person that comes to their site that makes a search in a different way. It thinks some people are more valuable than others based on previous behaviors. What Google will do is make you pay more per click for different users. Someone might only cost you two cents to get a click, and the next person might cost you a dollar and two cents. What we need to do is set our ceiling. What's the absolute max we're willing to pay? In this case, because it's branded search and we're operating under the assumption that your brand is under a million dollars in revenue, it means you probably don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of searches every day. We can be pretty conservative. We can cap the ceiling pretty low. I'm just gonna set this to three bucks. What's important here is if you notice that you're not getting any spend here at all, bump it up one dollar. Very, very, very rarely are you gonna have to go above five or six dollars unless you have a term that is used in a different context. For example, if my brand name was called pens or cases, then that would be a problem, right? Because people type in cases for a variety of other things. But generally speaking, you have a unique brand name. You shouldn't have to do more than a three or four dollar max CPC limit. Once we set that, we go ahead and move forward and we want to unselect the search network and the display network. These are just going to waste your spend completely. They're going to make your budget totally be spent. And you'll see right here, Google wants us to do this. They kind of show up as warnings like, hey, we get better conversions. We get more conversions, more people see your ads. If you click this, we don't need more people to see our ads. We need the right people to see our ads. We unselect those and we go down to locations and we're going to click, of course, whatever your target location is. In this case, it's the United States and whatever language you are speaking, plus whatever language your website is coded in English. In this case, for audience segments, these are just going to be observation audiences. Basically, you can just select a bunch of observation audiences. I'm just going to click select all to go through this very quickly. What this is going to do, it's going to show how your searches lie within audiences. If someone that is, according to this, a luxury shopper converts on your brand name, one of these campaigns, you'll see, okay, that category luxury shopper got a conversion. It doesn't actually impact who you're targeting. So it's not like a classic audience that we're used to. It's just looking, just observing. After audience segments, really, really, really important. We do not want to select broad match keywords. These are brand keywords. This needs to be your actual brand spelling, your actual brand keywords, not some variation of your brand. We make sure this is always off. Next, we shut off automatically created assets because again, this is your brand. We don't want them making things up for us. This has to be you. Your identity needs to be very, very clear here. As we move down to more settings, we always want ad 
ad rotation to be on optimize, prefer, best performing ads. As it says, it's gonna put your best ads in front of people based on the actual conversion data. And then everything else here can be left as is. I've mentioned this before. If you're using UTMs, plug these into your campaign URL parameters. The next step is actually entering your keywords. No matter what brand you are, it doesn't matter how you spell your brand name. You need to first do the front bracket and write in your brand name, close bracket. What I would recommend you do is group these together. Let's say your brand name was literally brand space name. We're then gonna do the same thing where we say brand name without the space in it. Write down a few variations. This should not be an expansive list. There are clients that we work with that literally have three keywords in this entire list, but that's okay because that's the way that their customers refer to their brand. You can do brand name, brand space name, and then maybe there's an often spelling mistake where people forget the N in name. It would just be brand aim for some reason. I think you get the point. If you have complex spelling in your business, just write it out a few different ways. It's okay to include a few misspellings in here, but don't try to be fancy and expand and expand and expand here because then you're gonna get irrelevant searches and irrelevant keywords and you're gonna spend money on completely wasted people going to your site. As we scroll down, we go into the ads. This is a branded search campaign. We need to lead with brand here. This is the most important part of the ad setup. In this case, you need to say brand name in your first headline and then in the second headline, you need to say brand name official site. Here's the key. You can't just write these in. You actually need to pin these to the first headline. Every single time you do this, you need to click show only in position one. Once we set these up in position one, the next step is write brand descriptors. If you're a shoes brand, write descriptors of your brand in your headlines. These might be stolen from your Pmax campaign that we just set up. They can be stolen from non-brand search. They can even be stolen just from like your SEO or your on-site copy. As long as they describe your brand properly and you're not creating false narratives here, they should go in here. Same thing in the descriptions. Your descriptions, you need to have four of these. They're 90 characters long. Let's just be expansive here. I recommend using the same things you had in Pmax, but include your brand name a few times. If your brand name is the Moonlighters, you should write the Moonlighters is XYZ. This is what we do. Be very descriptive in your description as it sounds. We are going to skip images. We are then going to add your business name. So just write your business name in here. I would recommend entering your business logo here. So this should be a square image on a white or transparent background. Very, very small image. And for the sake of site links, we are going to skip this as long as you are using your account level site links. Site links are important and we should have them fully included into your account. We can go to next here and for the budget. Unlike the Pmax campaign, this budget is really going to be determined by how much volume your brand does. How many searches there are for your brand regularly. If you're running a campaign already, I'd recommend just setting whatever that budget is. If you're not, start low. And if you see that budget is being used every single day, add a little bit more. What we don't wanna do is limit ourselves from only showing up 30% of the time because we're too cheap to spend $50 instead of $30 or $50 instead of $70. I like to set this in a, a medium range for the small brands that could be anywhere from like 25 to $50 a day. Normally, in, in many cases, you'll actually only spend like $10 or $3 or $5 in some days. It really just depends on the searches. Unlike Facebook advertising, you're not just gonna blow through your budget. You're actually gonna spend what people search depending on the keywords. That's why it's really important in that keyword section that we don't just make up a bunch of keywords. You actually have to have these keywords be relevant for you. They drive to the right place. Once we click next on our budget here, we can go through the review process. Now we just went through this step by step, so I'm not gonna go through it step by step again, but I want to recap what we just hit here. Let's go back to our campaigns. What we have done is we have created a performance max campaign at the top. This is going to be everywhere for us. Shopping, YouTube, search, discovery, display. It's even gonna hit some brand in search that's in our other campaign. This is gonna be our new customer acquisition driver, right? This is the top of that funnel. It's really gonna drive new people into your brand. They're gonna know about you. You're gonna show up in those shopping results very aggressively. And then to capture all that demand, as your brand is getting known more and more and more, we have that brand search campaign. That's the brand core that we have shown here. These results that I'm showing you right here, they're always gonna change per brand. But what we have from the Performance Max campaign on this specific account is a two ROAS and an eight ROAS in branded search. This setup is perfect if you're operating under $1 million. If you think this setup is gonna help you drive at least one more dollar in your business, let me know in the comments below and please subscribe. It helps a lot. Talk soon.